Pues tú... Okay, you can go ahead, Council Ritma. All right. Well, welcome to everybody uh, tonight, and uh, thanks for coming. This is our last meeting before Christmas, last meeting of the year, actually. So it's been a good year. So, um, and we have a busy agenda. So I'm not uh, going to take up any time uh, uh, talking about things. Um, the first item on our agenda is alterations to uh, the South Shore Community Center. And I think we have a couple of people here that want to talk to us about that. So, Paulo, is that you to start? Yeah, uh, thank you everyone for, for letting us join on the meeting. Uh, first of all, well, thank you. I'll just do a quick in introduction. Uh, my name obviously is Paolo. I work with the city in uh, facility planning uh, and development branch and, and Jenny works uh, just alongside me. Uh, <clears throat> we recently had a, um, uh, a request for a capital project at the South Shore Center, which is a designated building with the city. Um, Jenny will get uh, in more in the details a bit more, but just to give you a, a recap, we're looking at changing the exterior door. Uh, there are some issues with um, security surrounding it. Um, and in keeping that it's a, a, a heritage building, we want to present to you our, our approach. And uh, just to give you a, an idea is that we're, we're looking to keep the same uh, style, the same design, and actually actually use uh, similar elements that are currently installed uh, to keep with the, the heritage look. Uh, so Jenny can elaborate a bit more and she can actually share with you our, our preliminary design right now. So take it away, Jenny. Hi everyone, so I'm Jenny, I'm with Facilities. Uh, so we're looking to replace a door frame um, that leads to a, a, the public washrooms at South Shore. Uh, so right now it's existing wood door frame and there's a um, transom window above the door. So we've had some vandalism in the past um, because of people trying to access after hours and during camp and fest events. So we're looking to replace the wood door frame with hollow metal for more durability. Um, and we're working with an architect right now. So we do have preliminary drawings uh, for the committee's review. Um, what the intent is, is we would replace with hollow metal frame, but we would reuse the wood trims and then we would uh, attach it to the hollow metal frame. So from the exterior, you would actually see the wood trim and it would just match existing. So I can show everybody the uh, drawings. So can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So, so this is the door and that's the wood trims and above. Uh, so the door is existing to remain. We're showing in here green. That's where we're looking to replace it with the hollow metal frame. And we're showing brown as we would reuse all the existing wood trims, emollients, et cetera. And this kind of gives you the detail. This is hollow metal and then all gray is existing. So that would be where the wood trims are. And there is a section detail over here. So this would be the wood trims and that we would replace uh, if needed, or we would actually reuse it if it's possible. And this is the hollow metal frame with all the wood trims and uh, transom window above that we would keep. And I do have existing photos that I can share. Sorry, since I'm presenting, I can't see my uh, share button anymore. So this is the existing photos, if any, everyone can see. So that's a transom. The intent is that um, we would actually remove this and reinstall it after the hollow metal frame is uh, complete. Uh, we don't know the existing condition. So if we have to modify or replace it, we would just to match existing. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, the drawings and photos that I have. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Jenny or Paul? <coughs> 
I, I can't see everybody, but um, I holler if you have a question. Oh, Kathy. Um, so this is the exterior door to the building. To the public washrooms. To the public washrooms, okay. Um, and it's the actual framing around it, so the darker green. Correct. That you're replacing. Uh, it's the, yes, but we would use the green parts on the face of it, so the wood trims. So, but you're not, you're not actually replacing, are, you're, are you replacing the door itself or just the frame? Not the door, just the frame. Just the frame around, okay, and then you're going to put wood over it to make it look like it does now. Yeah, <laughs> we would reuse this, uh, the green, the darker green if we mm -hmm. can, and if we can't, we would replace it with a wood trim. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. I don't Chair, see any. I have one, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a question. Um, so thank you, first of all, for bringing this item of detail to our community. It's greatly appreciated. Just curious, the door, I mean, I don't want to make this more than what it is, but the door itself, um, that does, is like, what's the age of the door? It doesn't, it's obviously not original, am I correct? I'm trying to... Yes, so I don't know about the door, but I believe the frame is original and it might be okay. about 100 years is what mm. the architect estimated. Right. Okay. Cause, cause, yeah, it just looks like that might be a, a fairly modern metal door. I didn't know if there was any way to have a more um, period piece door put on, but I mean, I understand the utility that it's a public access point and in and out and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, it's just a thought, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that. As, as an item, I don't know if that's a, something that you're looking at or could look at, but, or if it even matters, I'm just kind of curious, caught my eye. We weren't, uh, just sort of answer uh, that question a little bit further, we weren't planning on um, replacing the door as it's still got some useful life left in it. Um, but if, it, if there is the opportunity to change it in the future, we would certainly uh, bring it back to Heritage Committee for their comment and, uh, and approval as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other question, Kathy? And I just um, so you're not sure if this was the original door. Is that what I'm hearing? It it definitely most definitely was not the original door. Not the original uh, door. It, is it solid wood though? Do you know what kind of wood it is? Because you know doors doors especially in the older buildings are very difficult to replace. I believe Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it is hollow metal. It is. Yeah, so I believe it's hollow metal. I think um, it has oh. been vandalized before and they had to replace it a few times. Okay. And uh, so they ended up replacing with hollow metal to match uh, as close as possible to the existing before. We should put a, a nice big thick oak door on so they can't <laughs> get through it. Okay, any other questions? No? All right. Yeah, it looks to me like it's about a Series 900 door, actually. It's not, um, definitely not, period. My question is, are you, uh, are you going to paint the trim green again? Yes, we would paint it to match the existing color. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Jenny or Paul? And when, when you... Um, I, I think I heard somebody, but I can't see them. Uh, yeah. Okay, Go Kathy. Ahead. It was just uh, a question about when they remove the transom, does it just go back and do you uh, put it into City Hall or does it stay in the South Shore Center in safekeeping? We haven't gone through the construction side of it, but I, I think it would be done probably in a day or so. Okay. So it would probably be on site um, during that time. Yeah. If there is a request to keep it, if it's unusable, though, we can certainly set it aside uh, for safekeeping. Okay. Uh, Councillor or Chair, I had a comment as well. Sure, yes. You, but, um, if there is no other comments or questions from the committee, that is. No, I don't have one. No, okay. Um, no. Yeah, I just wanted to give uh, context a little bit to, um, to Jetty uh, and follow what they're here today is, um, 
because it's a designated building, there's only one line in the designating bylaw that mentions um, the doors and it, spec and it states the doors were uh, four paneled wood with glazed transoms above, period. So it just speaks to it and it references it. Um, we know that we think the door is not original. We'll likely, con we can confirm that, but I'm pretty sure it's not an original door. Um, so really what J Jenny's here to talk about is basically um, get the committee's blessing that they can proceed and go ahead and alter the building for the purposes of re replacing the door frame, uh, which is not itself listed, but uh, it's connected to the transom, which is listed. So we just, we're here uh, out of an abundance of caution, essentially. Uh, and get the committee's blessing that we can proceed with the with the alterations to the building. Um, and like uh, like uh, Paolo mentioned, will the the transom will likely will keep the will want to see keep the, the existing transom. I think there's actually a storm window, and then there's an actual window behind it. It looks like there's almost looks like there's two panes, but I, I don't know if it's just the picture. But um, they'll be pulling everything out, replacing the frame, and putting everything back in if it's if it's um, if it's possible to do. So I guess. We may hear from them once they get into the work. Um, if you know if something happens, if something breaks, and it's not you know they can't put it back in, they might come back to us and ask us um, um, what to do with that. But that's that's it for me. I just want to provide a little bit more context. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thanks, uh, Thomas. Any questions uh, as we go of Thomas? No. Okay. All right. Um, do we need a motion on this or? Yes, I see Tammy nodding. So um, can I have a motion then from someone to um, approve the proposed work at the, um, at the South Shore Community Center? We yeah. have something drafted, Councillor Rayburn. Oh, you do? Oh. <laughs> if that oh, helps. That's... Thanks to Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I just, want me just read it out? Yes, please. Okay, the committee recommend that the proposed alterations to the South Shore Center being the replacement of a door frame and transom window as presented by city staff on December 9th, 2020 be approved. All right. Um, so do I have a mover for that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move that, Craig. All right, thank you, uh, Craig. Uh, seconder? I'll second, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Harris. Um, all those in favor? Can we raise your hands? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. I don't see everybody, but I'm pretty sure everybody agreed with that. So the motion is carried. So thank you very much. And, um, and thank you, Jenny and Paul, for uh, your presentation. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. And we'll be sure to follow up with, uh, with the committee after, during and after uh, construction as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you again, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank you. All right. Um, so our uh, the next item on the agenda. Ah, now I can see everybody again. That's great. <laughs> That's better. Uh, That's much easier to uh, to uh, run a meeting this way. Um, so the next item is the draft official plan and the city uh, urban guidelines, um, and we have uh, circulated to you all um, a. Uh, sort of a working document that the committee put together. Um, I haven't heard any, had any email comments on it, but um, uh, any discussion on what has been put together or any questions? Uh, Kathy. Uh, excuse me. I sent um, just this afternoon and you may not have seen it yet, Claire. I sort of put together, Deb and I, as the subcommittee, we're working on um, adding Tollendale and Minettes to the uh, historic neighborhood. And so I've put some stuff together and I sent that off today and I copied Thomas on it just so you could have a look. And I didn't know whether you wanted to add it into this working document. And I also listed out some stuff related to the land use designations sort of in a little more specific. Okay. Um, I but have- Not everyone has a copy of that. I don't think I've seen your email yet, um, but I'll, uh, I'll accept, I'll take your word for it. Um, <laughs> do, you want, uh, do you want me to- So uh, let me ask you this, Thomas. Um, the, um, 
the the um, uh, Kathy and Deb were working on the boundaries of uh, Tollendale. Is that part of your uh, your email, Kathy? Yes. All right. And Thomas, um, I don't know whether you've had a chance to have a look at that, but are you content with uh, what they have suggested? Uh, I did get Kathy's email. Um, fortunately, I just haven't had time to to get to it um, to actually look at it in detail. Um, I would prefer if the committee uh, looked at all of the comments and were in agreement. Um, you know, so if we need a couple of uh, a week or so for the committee to look at all the comments together and uh, be in agreement, even if it's by email, um, I would appreciate that. So we're not, um, you know, so that it's not just a couple of people saying it; it's the whole committee as a whole. Um, and then we'll accept the comments uh, as they are. So um, if uh, so, so yeah, if the committee agrees, we'll just accept those comments. I won't be, I won't be as staff member saying these comments are not valid or these comments are more valid. We'll, we'll take them all and, and, um, and see if we can action on them. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, Kathy, what we'll do then is we will take your uh, boundary, your proposed boundary um, under consideration. And, and I guess each committee member can give some feedback on that in the next week or so. Um, and um, so, and you had a couple of other comments, Kathy, I take it. I did. Um, I think, uh, and I talked to Deb about this today. One of the, one of the, the issues is, and it's, there's, there might be a little confusion about historic neighborhood, historic neighborhood versus maybe it's a landscape as opposed to the historic neighborhood, because when you go down, especially uh, Tollendale area um, and even Crim Crimson Road area, a lot of it is new subdivision now. And so it was really hard when we were, you know, we got to Cox Mill and Tollendale Mill to even figure out where Tollendale Village or the historic neighborhood would be. There are some homes throughout, but an awful lot of them have been um, taken down and there's lots of new monster homes up. However, having said that, the actual landscape more than the homes themselves would be something that I think we should look at. Does that make sense? And I do have a call into uh, Marissa from the Tollendale neighborhood. I haven't heard back from her yet because I wanted to get her input as to where she thought Tollendale was in, in terms of the village so that we could sort of, but it's, it's, it's hard because it's, you know, when you go down Tollendale Mill Road, uh, you pass the marina it, and Craig, you'll know where the marina is. And then you, you pass some older homes. And then once you get to that four point where Shepherd Park is, there's an awful lot of new monster homes. So where the bound, like I, they're on the map, there's no street, with names that I can, you know, identify in the document. Does that make sense? So it's really all, all along the water really should be designated something or whether it's a land use designation or it's a um, natural heritage, cultural designation of some sort. And that would go, that would be true right from Manette's all along the water or the sort of the one block of homes along the water, Bay Lane over to Gables, over to Tollendale, to Tyndale Park. Um, you know, that's what we were sort of looking at. The government dock is still at the end of Dock Road. How long has that government dock been there? So that's, you know, it's not a lot of older homes. So I, I'm not quite sure what direction to go with that. All right. Um... I think one thing for sure is that if we're going to ask staff to put, uh, make Tollendale a um, historic neighborhood, and I think there's lots of merit for doing that, mm -hmm. we do need to give them a recommendation as to what the boundary ought to be. Mm -hmm. um, simply because um, there are consequences uh, because different policies apply. And right. so uh, I think we really, need to think about that. Um, now, I mean, I suppose if we include some monster homes, that's not going to materially have a, an effect. I mean, they may not be historic, 
um, but certainly the policies won't negatively affect them. So um, I guess um, I'm just thinking about how do we find a way forward? Uh, Craig? Well, I, I just say, uh, so obviously um, Doc Road and um, Cox Mill Road, because they have some, some older homes on it, and Tallendale Mill Road, um, mm -hmm. which ends where the Gables is. Right. Um, so those are the roads with 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 heritage buildings, um, and you know if you're going to include the old, you know the the uh, what's it called uh, the bottom of the hill where Tallendale Park is, is it Tallendale Park yeah. on the water that you'd probably include that area. So then it would be sort of connected with with the heritage with Allendale basically. Sort of. Right. Maybe, I would I would probably the the last hist historic home. Is on I think is on Cox Mill. Yeah, and that's my suggestion. <clears throat> okay. Any other? Oh, Sarah. Uh, hi. I was just wondering if perhaps it would be good if you could circulate the map of what you have now, and if other people have different thoughts, maybe we can sort of just draw on where we would think and then provide a rationale for that. Would that be easier to visualize? I know I'm having a little bit of trouble um, <laughs> following along, so maybe a map would be. Well, um, the, and, the, and even the map, so, oh, sorry. The map doesn't have some of the street names on it. That's the difficulty. So what I did send um, to uh, Claire and Thomas so far was I did talk about Dock Road and, and Cox Mill and uh, Tyndale, and I did have a question about Big Bay Point also, because B Big Bay Point down at the bottom of the lake is also an area like, if you're familiar with Bay Lane, you go down Bay Lane, and uh, it where it connects with Gables, the Gables Park. Um, it's similar to that at Big Bay Point, at the bottom of Big Bay Point. So all along the water, there are, you know, older cottages, but also that's sort of the original area at Big Bay. So I didn't know whether that I've put that on the list as a question, should we include Big Bay? Because it is, you know, it is sort of a heritage area. Yeah. Okay, uh, Councillor Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question uh, for you um, to Thomas. And if it's been answered before, I apologize. Um, you know, certainly every area in the city has its history and existed in a prior time. What is the risk of us um, overextending this um, this boundary? Because um, I'm sure we can keep going and find one historical reference site location. The beach has been there. I mean, the beach has been there forever. That kind of stuff. I mean, like, is is there like a risk to watering it down or overextending? Or what is the risk? Is there a risk, and what is the risk of keeping this? We could keep going and, and Kathy can give us good reasons. I appreciate absolutely that we could keep going, but you know, how much density, how much, you know, volume of historical uh, um, items, sites that you, you have to have to kind of keep that designation moving along the waterfront. Thomas. Uh, uh, thank you uh, through you chair, um, uh, Councilor Harris. That's a very good question. And um, as, as somebody who's sort of a, the author of the document that you guys are responding to or the committee's responding to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm careful not to push the committee one way or another. Um, I really would just want the committee to deliberate, but I can uh, give you some pros and cons. And I think uh, uh, Councilor Ritma did mention, you know, the policy consequences of identifying a, a historic neighborhood. Um, people that do apply for development applications in these areas would be put through additional policy steps, additional policy rigor, and then they would have to meet those policies. Um, and you're correct, Kathy, and I think you you um, you're, you're right in saying that you know some of these historic neighborhoods that are uh, original neighborhoods of Barry uh, or original communities in the Barry area, um, they are original or historic by name maybe more so than by cultural heritage uh, resources on the ground. Um, so the committee has to weigh that. But at the same time, 
uh, a lot of these areas are uh, um, you know, going undergoing transition where some of these older homes, uh, lots are being consolidated and you mentioned monster homes being constructed. Uh, but at the same time, these larger homes, um, because this is a desirable area in the city, you are getting larger homes that are mostly of, of higher quality uh, quality or how higher um, craftsmanship. So you're getting stone, you're getting masonry, you're getting um, woodwork and things like that. So these are potentially heritage homes of the future. Um, you know, in 50 years or so, when everybody's living in concrete and glass buildings um, and people walking down um, streets of Barry saying, look at that, that's a single detached house. It'll make them hit like they used to type thing. <laughs> the same thing we do when we walk down uh, William street or, or um, whatever, yeah. You know, we look at these buildings, so it's something to consider because with this plan is looking to 2041, right? So 20 years, 2051 potentially. So we're, we're looking, we've got a long view. So that's something the committee has to weigh. So, um, you know, if it's, if we, if we're, if the committee's concerned about uh, throwing the net too far, it's definitely possible to scale the neighborhood to particular streets, blocks and whatnot. If you don't want to go all the way to Dock Road, um, you know, Maybe the, there are specific policies for these new neighborhoods. Maybe we don't speak to so much build character, but we want to maintain the streetscapes, you know, protect the mature uh, trees, uh, sort of the, the wider setbacks and things like that. So you're not holding people to the same standard of, you know, you got to replace like with like type thing, but because what's there now is modern sort of suburban design. Um, so that's, it's a lot for the committee to consider. And I apologize, I'm not getting a straight, straightforward answer. Um, that's the nature of planning. There's uh, never a straightforward answer. So it's just, what does the committee feel comfortable with? Um, and just submit those comments, right? And then staff are going to look at those comments and evaluate all these factors and, uh, you know, ag agree with you or not, or at least in part. And um, we would revise the policies as needed. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, I, and I, uh, Councilor Harris, do you have a- Oh, sorry, I was just yeah. I, th I just want to thank Thomas. I was I'm trying to look at the map and trying to you know follow along and I, yeah I, I I was wondering about you know like, like Tondale Mill Road seems to be a bit of a an interesting line with you know I know T Tyndale Park has its heritage history too. Is, is that a kind of a place where we I don't know at that level of and I, I really liked your comment about the heritage buildings of the of the future as we have these areas that can really um, uh, make structures that are appealing and will test uh, stand the test of time. That is a good reminder that that area does have some of that quality. So uh, I don't know if I added much to the, to the conversation about where that boundary is, but uh, I did appreciate uh, Councillor, uh, pardon me, uh, Chair, Chair, Chair Reitman's uh, note about the, uh, the uh, chuckle about the, the planning not being an exact issue. Yeah. I'm learning that through my time on council. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig. I just quickly, I was just going to note that I think the, this whole idea of um, Tallendale was because uh, a group from there asked us to consider putting them as part of the historic uh, neighborhood. So Kathy was saying she's trying to get in contact with them. So I think there were some people in that community that were saying they would like certain, like you said, certain roads or maybe you know, the Gables Forest or a couple of areas, you know, to be part of this. So if we can do it, like some streets, um, that's what they were asking. And I think that's kind of where this this came from, so. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. Um, Thomas. Uh, thanks, sir. thank you, uh, Chair. And um, Craig, that's correct. We had a request back in September of 2019 uh, and it was actually regarding uh, heritage signage for um, for Tallendale. Um, and, and they weren't clear if they want street signs per se, like we have in our existing historic neighborhoods, or if they want like a large sort of plaque that says, welcome to historic Tallendale. Uh, Tallendale. Um, and it's actually, and Kathy, you were asking me about this. We were talking on the phone uh, earlier, and it's actually Tallendale Woods Homeowners Association. That is the name of, of the group that got in touch with us. Okay, uh, and we, Yeah, and when we deferred that matter um, for the historic neighborhood sort of plaque or sign, um, because we wanted to deal with it comprehensively rather than just one for, for one neighborhood. So we haven't acted on that, but it is um, 
that's what they were looking for. They didn't necessarily want to be recognized as a historic neighborhood in the OP, um, but that's a possibility if, the, if, the, if this committee feels that is appropriate. All right. Um, I guess what I'm looking for now is a way forward. Um, Kathy, you have uh, provided a list of streets. Um, you're going to have some discussion with uh, some local people as well. Um, do you think that in the next few days, you will be able to refine that a little bit? Um, and I guess it probably behooves uh, some of the rest of us to uh, have some thoughts about that and to maybe even go out there and have a look. Um, I think my view of it is that um, we don't, we want to cast a net, but I don't think we want to cast a net that is too broad. Um, I think uh, Councillor Harris hit it on the head is that there's a certain density of sort of historic character that needs to be there. Um, and of course it needs to be connected, but um, I think uh, if there's anything that we do, it needs to be defensible. And of course in planning, uh, who knows what's defensible, but it's, <laughs> it, it, that's, a, that's a really wide open uh, question. But, um, you, you know, I, I think you get the sort of the qualitative drift of what I'm saying. Um, so if I can offer this, uh, Kathy, if you would continue to work on what you're working with the local person that you're talking to, um, and then as soon as you're able, give us, if you can't give us a map, um, that's life. Um, uh, if you can, I think that would be really helpful uh, with some specific boundaries on it. But if you can't, give us a list of streets that you think should be included. And um, if you can do that in the next um, few days, then what I'll try to do is I'll try to pull that together and uh, maybe we can, between now and the next week or so, uh, by email, we can figure out um, where we are with the boundary. Is that a reasonable suggestion? Yeah, I think the email that I sent today does list all the streets and like parks that we had just, we've just talked about, that's in the email. So it's already documented. Um, and I, you know, as, as long as uh, I uh, get in touch or Marissa and I talk, uh, just to get a better understanding from her. Um, I've left her, I sent her an email and I've uh, left her a phone message as well. So I'll wait to hear back from her. And uh, apart from that, I think what I've sent is what we should be doing. And I can try to draw on a map, but again, because the street names aren't on the map, it would just really be all, most of it is along the lake. So very close, like it wouldn't, like where you see Hearst, you know, where Hearst is, uh, it would be the other side of Hearst toward the lake, but it would be really close to the lake, like one block away from the lake, all the way along, including the parks. Okay. So, all right. I think so, Deb had a question, but didn't get to it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I think Deb had a question, but uh, I don't think we got to her. Oh, sorry, Deb. <laughs> No problem. I thought I was invisible. Um, I was just going to, I thought Thomas's reference um, to today's homes will be the big mansions of tomorrow. Um, and I guess my only contribution to, you know, how we define that, that neighborhood. 120 years ago, the South Shore was where all the elites had their monster homes or their big cottages. So that's how I think of that area and, and those few isolated homes that are still left. But <clears throat> it was really the historic South Shore and the, the waterfront along there. So I don't know if we need to reference it. Like I said, <clears throat> we've already talked. We can't boil the ocean, so uh, we can't do it all. But uh, if there's a way to, to you know, parse out the, the pieces that need to be captured. Well, that's probably a good idea. All right. Okay, so we'll, we'll work on that in the next few days and uh, then we'll circulate something after that. Um, 
Uh, Kathy, did you have other um, additions to our working document as well? I, I did. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have them in front of me, but um, we had talked, one, one of them was if we didn't capture the historic neighborhood, could we look at, and, or can we, um, and I, I don't know if it becomes natural heritage culture or landscape, but all the way around the bay from the end of the North Trail, all the way around to uh, the end of the South Trail uh, becomes a sort of a designated landscape. <clears throat> that's one thing I think I, I, I don't know if, I spelled that out correctly in my email, but that's what I was aiming for. I think we've talked about, you know, trying to, um, you know, do some landscape designations. So I don't know if we could, you know, if you can, if we just identify it like you do with the heritage, what is it called? Um, the natural heritage system or, you know, all around the Bay. Um, that's something that I had asked. So I don't know if that's doable. And then I also talked um, quite extensively about the land use designations in and around Allendale specifically. And I've um, indicated on the email what I was thinking in terms of Gowan Street and along Essa Road and how far, as well as um, the storefront. So the existing at Gowan and Essa, that block between Essa and Cumberland are actual storefronts that could be restored back to their, you know, we, I think somewhere in the document, I read that there's talk about, you know, um, having buildings restored and taking the cladding off to see what's underneath and put it back to its original form, if it's possible. And that would be um, a good area uh, to to do that if that was something that could be done. So that's just that was just a comment. Now I know that's also potentially uh, an area of development. But if that doesn't happen, then you know it'd be really nice because what's happened over time in that particular block is the developer has converted the commercial ground floor space to residential. So it doesn't look like storefronts anymore, but the storefront is still there. Um, there's one shop that's a tattoo parlor right now, which if you look at it, um, and if you actually went in it, you would see the historical value of everything inside in terms of the flooring and, and the storefront, which is similar to what the downtown shops would look like. So I don't know if that's, that's something. And then just the height of the buildings where, where I thought 15 stories could go versus, um, medium density being four to 12 stories. We've indicated that maybe we would, I don't know if there could be another designation that would be instead of four to 12, it would be four to six in certain areas. Um, and then for, you know, and then anything six to 12 in certain areas. Okay. So that's in the, the email that I sent and it speaks to specific streets. And I think I'm missing a couple of streets, so I just have to figure out which ones they are. Sure, and you can <laughs> always send another email out. Yeah. Um, but it sounds to me that um, your comment is something akin to item 12 in our working document, where yeah. we say, while the medium density on Gowan Street is satisfactory, yes. we suggest the new building height be limited to four stories. Right. Closer to Essa Road, the height could increase to six stories. Right. Um, I think, you know, unless, um, yeah, send, send, I'll have a look at your email yeah. and we can, we can doctor that up if we need to. Um, I circulated the working document. Any comments, thoughts, or questions on it? Did I see your hand, Craig? Oh, Sarah. Uh, yeah, just we talk, we touched a little bit on the archaeology that is in the document, um, and I can send out a little bit more of a flushed out version of it, um, specifically talking about the artifacts um, and the engagement, which are kind of two kind of wonky bits that we deal with in archaeology. 
Okay, if you if you would mind sending that to me, then I can add it to this document. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Craig, did you have something that you wanted to say, or did I just no? Okay. Any other discussion about our working documents? Okay, it's still it's still um, uh, in the works. Um, so the things that we need to add to it is uh, some further comments from Sarah on the archaeology, uh, the boundary of Tollendale, and then um, I will have a look at what Kathy has sent, and I may massage a couple of, uh, of these items. Um, and then what I'll do is once I have it kind of finished, I'll circulate it to everybody. Um, we do have to submit it to uh, our friends at the planning department uh, before the 12th or the 22nd of December. Kathy. Um, was there somewhere that we talked about, and I know, I think Thomas, we might've briefly said something about heritage trees and trees in particular in the heritage neighborhood. Is that anywhere? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Okay. Yeah, um, in, in number 10, it says, we suggest that the policy 841B uh, be expanded to include not only individual trees, but landscapes and streetscapes as well. Okay. And I, and I think just recently, one of the other committees did something about trees and pruning of trees in historic, yeah. in older neighborhoods. Was it, uh, are you familiar with that? Yeah, because that was my motion. So what was that? Okay, so there is something coming sort of separate from this related to trees, right? Yeah, it's not an official plan policy, but it's a it's more of a uh, sort of a management kind of thing in terms of managing forest cover. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else on that item? Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to say um, a, a great deal of thanks for the committee and their hard work. Um, all I had to do was do some typing. Uh, so uh, uh, it's always nice not to have to do the thinking. Um, all right, let's move on to the next item then is the 2020 Heritage Berry Awards. Who's got that? Is that something for Thomas? Okay, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's more just an update to the committee that, um, as the committee knows, we've got the photographer selected, and I actually spoke with him uh, just before the meeting today, so he's going to look for just a nice bright day to go and take the pictures. Um, uh, the thing is uh, that the frames um, usually take about two weeks to get to us, so if, if I get the pictures sometime next week, uh, and then I submit those pictures to the framer, um, we're not entirely sure if we can get that in uh, done by December. Um, and, and it's important because we're trying to get this done in, in the 2020 budget year. Uh, and that means Tammy needs the invoice from the framer uh, in December. So it comes out of the December budget. So I will be speaking with uh, the framer to see if we can uh, get that done within December so we don't spill over. Um, so we're working on that. And uh, I also did confirm with the photographer that he is able to give us uh, the, um, um, the replacement image for 134 Blake Street, which is that uh, damaged or, or, you know, it's a replacement heritage ward. Um, so I think the ph ph uh, photography will be able to get done in December. Um, it's just more so the frames. So um, I'll, I'll speak with Tammy. Just I wanted to put that on the committee's uh, um, radar that it may go on the 2021 budget but we're gonna try as hard as we can to get it in the 2020 budget. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, we have that room in the budget at the moment. So, Councillor Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to um, Thomas, if the, if the pictures are done and they're at the framers, can we not get the invoice prior to the work being completed? Uh, that is exactly what I intend to figure out. Okay, because that would seem within allowable limits that, you know, we've got the invoice. It's anyway, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that, uh, you know, the powers that be at, uh, at the budget area, they can, they can figure out how to, how to do that. Um, 
Craig. Um, I, I, I was just thinking, I don't know where you get them framed, but uh, maybe suggestion is there's a framing shop in Old Allendale in a historic home, beautiful. And it's a framing. Oh, right. <laughs> um, it's, it's called the Carriage House. Anyways, just something to consider. Then we're supporting, I mean, they have a beautiful heritage home. Might be nice to support local business in, in a historic area, just a suggestion. And they're on Essa Road um, in Old Allendale. Thank you. What? Okay. Thomas. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Craig, uh, um, we are shopping local. This is not, uh, you know, this is not an Amazon order type thing. Uh, we are getting it done local and it's hand done. And um, this is somebody we've worked with in the past. So I feel uh, pretty comfortable, uh, you know, um, uh, trusting her, her, their judgment in terms of uh, the frames and the matting. They always do custom matting. They cut the pictures if they need to be cut to cut things out. So, um, and they always put a little inscription for us. Uh, they don't charge us for these little things. So um, I think maybe for, for next year, I would uh, definitely uh, explore that option if we want to go on a different route. But for this year, I would recommend that we just uh, stay the course type thing, just because we are very, very close in terms of timelines. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. Uh, but it is a great suggestion, uh, Craig. Um, all right. Uh, anything else on the on the heritage uh, uh, Barry Awards? Done. Okay. Um, the plaque order. Where are we with that? And that's Craig. No, I was just going to say. Uh, oh. When are we going to? So do the awards. Did we decide that we're going to give the awards in February at the, yeah. that's okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, during heritage week in February. All right. Um, the heritage plaques is the next item on the agenda. Um, where are we with that? Craig, is that your, Oh, uh, Thomas, like you've got your hand up. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, my hand disappears when I don't have it right in front of my face. Um, I just wanted to just give, again, this is just an update to the committee that we have uh, four properties that have confirmed acceptance of the plaques. Uh, there's 62 Shirley, 142 Collingwood, 37 Mulcaster being uh, McLaren Art Center, um, and uh, 123 Dunlop. So those are the four properties that uh, we are going to go ahead on. Um, we should have no problem in um, getting that um, uh, again, it's the same thing with the frames. I'm going to try to get that invoice done as quickly as possible. We already know the quote. Uh, we already know the budget that we're working with. So we are going under budget um, or we're with, within budget. Um, yeah. As uh, the committee had approved, I believe, for up to $4,000 to be spent on this. So we can definitely get all of these done prof professionally installed uh, by uh, Owen Seincraft. So I'm, I'll be proceeding with that order. The only thing that we have to confirm are the circa dates. And this is where I was going to lean on the committee to, to help me out with this because uh, records are uh, spotty on my end. And I would, um, I would like to ask if Deb, uh, perhaps you can help me out finding the circa dates for these properties if we could um, to, to the point where we feel that it's a defensible date. I mean, it's, it's tough to get an exact date unless you have the original building permit and uh, or, or, a, or a bank loan or something to, to say that it was built in this year. Um, so we just need to confirm that with, um, with uh, Owen Seincraft uh, and then we'll proceed with the order. So I, I don't know if you have a reliable resource for that, Deb. Uh, but I see you nodding, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to hear you. Yeah. You're on mute there. <laughs> I have the microphone now. Uh, I think we can help. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Good. That's that's a sign that I think every chairman needs is you're on mute. <laughs> uh, so um, anything else on heritage plaques? I think we've covered it. Okay. The committee budget. Um, and Tammy, I think I got a email from you on that. I'm just trying to look for it. Can you uh, bring us up to date? Do you want me to do it up to date? Okay. Yes, please. Um, okay, so in the committee's budget currently, there's $99,770 left. But what has to come out of that is the plaques, the heritage awards, and then the 
the, the amount for the replacement award for 134 Blake Street. So, okay. so we quoted roughly 4,000 for plaques, 2,500 for heritage awards, and 250 for um, the replacement award, $250. So that's just estimates of what the prices are, or what, what you guys approved. Um, Kaylee does have a receipt. Unfortunately, it got delayed with COVID and stuff like that, for, which is over and above the amount the committee approved in January for uh, promotional items for the table. And it's for the tablecloth. So I just need an approval from the committee for, for the tablecloth for $72.43 so we can pay her receipt. So that's All just right. need somebody to approve that, the committee to approve it. Okay. Any discussion on any of that? All right. So with, uh, with Kathy, with with all of that, what's left over? Um, approximately. Good question. <laughs> I didn't add that up. Oh, okay. Um, I think we there's a couple of thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, probably a couple thousand. So now, is there any way that we can have that rolled over to 2021? given that it's the COVID year and we were unable to complete. I know other committees have done this. So I'm just wondering if that's something that we could do. Typically they don't roll the money over. Um, I'm not sure this year if that anything's happening with that, but typically they don't roll the money over, carry the money, money over to approve. Yeah. I can ask the clerk, but I yeah. don't very much that's going to happen. Right. Um, but I can ask. Yeah. Because um, I, I yeah. forget, I know it, one of the, I can't, I can't remember again, it might've been the accessibility committee or one of the committees asked, given the um, situation at hand, uh, if it mm -hmm. could be rolled over. So, I mean, all we can do is ask. Yep, I will ask, but um, normally, typically not, then it doesn't roll over typically. Um, so, yeah, but I, I, I think, think I, I think it's, um, it, it's gonna be a challenge. I, I don't think we normally get uh, that kind of uh, rollover permission. Um, and uh, I wouldn't count on it this year either. Uh, and certainly the city um, uh, has lots of things to do with our uh, $2,000 that are uh, left over. Mm -hmm. However, uh, let me say as well that I've, uh, we've put forward a fairly aggressive budget for next year. And I've had a discussion with uh, staff and um, I don't think we're going to get all of our requests, but I think we're going to uh, find ourselves uh, with um, a budget that is uh, pretty sufficient for the kinds of things that we need to do. So um, uh, we won't know that until council beats it up uh, between now and uh, end of January, but um, I'm pretty hopeful that we will um, we will uh, do fairly well for next year. All right. Any um, any questions on 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 this committee budget, Tammy? I just have another question. Can I just get the committee to approve uh, uh, Sarah's expenditure? <laughs> just so I get noted in the minutes. I I just need to note it, it was in the minutes. Uh, yeah. I yeah like, oh, sorry, have, Kaylee. Yeah. I apologize. I think, yeah, we should get Kaylee. Get you two mixed up. <laughs> um, uh, do we, all right. Uh, we have a recommendation to pay Kaylee uh, her uh, bill. Any uh, discussion? Those in favor? All right. Any opposed? Perfect. Kaylee gets her money. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's good. All right. Um, the next item is development applications under review. Thomas, that is for you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, I don't have any uh, development applications that need to go before the committee. There is, of course, things that come through committee of adjustment that are in the historic neighborhoods, but of course, I haven't had anything that I had uh, a concern with or that needs to be brought forward to the committee. Um, and uh, the only thing I wanted to bring up to the committee um, is, um, I believe we talked about it at the last committee meeting was uh, 79 Collier Street. Um, the uh, applicant is of course not presenting at this committee meeting uh, to, uh, regarding the heritage impact assessment. 
but they did ask if the committee has any questions that they would like uh, answered, that the committee provide those questions to me and I could provide it to them. Uh, so when they do come to the committee, they would be they would have those answers. Um, that doesn't, of course, preclude that there can be new questions. I'm assuming usually questions beget more questions. So it's just uh, any any specific details you want answers on, uh, please send them on over. So they, they'll come prepared uh, for, um, I'm assuming it will be the next meeting in January, but it may be um, the one after that. And that would be everything for each other. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I, uh, yes, I think that um, uh, the Collier Street uh, project is certainly uh, of interest to us because it's right beside the, uh, the, uh, the historic building and it has the, also has the fireman's uh, pole there as well. So we're going to obviously have some questions about how that building um, fits into those two. Um, and yes, we will have, I think it's tentatively scheduled that they will be um, present to make a presentation to us. Um, and uh, when they make a presentation, uh, we will be able to ask them questions. And then um, at some point, it won't necessarily be that meeting, but the following meeting, maybe uh, we would uh, make a recommendation or comments to Thomas who then would hand those comments on to the planner that's on the file, who would uh, make his recommendation based on what we've said. All right, um, anything else on that item? Okay, um, 59 I just, I William have, Street. I oh, sorry, Kathy. Yeah, I, just, I did have a question. Do you have, um, Thomas, is there any, any idea of sort of timeline surrounding this at this point? Um, in what sense, Kathy? Um, when they would actually, like they're, you're going through site plan approval now, what, 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 maybe can you just talk a little bit about like your in site planning approval? Um, is there any reports that have to still come in? I mean, they did a heritage impact assessment, but then I, I think if I remember, there was going to be an engineering report as well, maybe asked for. That's right. So at, in the heritage impact assessment, um, there was, uh, it was mentioned that there's potential vibration, uh, you know, concerns and that there's going to be a en professional engineer. I had asked for a couple of other things uh, right. to the applicant as well. So if there's any additional reports, those reports will just be posted. Uh, there's nothing going to council or planning advisory committee. Right. Uh, site plan process is not a is not an open process. So the, the public process is at the uh, zoning bylaw stage. Uh, that has been we've passed that stage. So right now we're we're essentially at a technical uh, side of things. So we're trying to address the the technical components of the development, which would be such things such as how do we uh, appropriately and you know comprehensively address any heritage impacts on. Um, 36 Mulcaster being the armory. Right. So I don't have timing for you, Kathy. I don't know. It, it's largely an applicant driven process. The applicant applies. Uh, we provide them with comments. They provide, they come back with another uh, submission and so on and so forth. So I've seen site plans that take years to come yeah. through. Uh, I've seen uh, organizations that are super organized and, you know, two, a week after we provide comments, they're coming back to us with a revised plan. So this is a this is a large scale development. Uh, it's going to have a large impact on the downtown. Um, so they're, you know, they are being comprehensive, and it, it does take time to do these revisions. Okay. And uh, as far as then, this will then go to committee of adjustment for final approvals. Does this go to committee of adjustment at some point? It, it may need it may need to go to committee of adjustment if they're deficient on things. Um, you know, they do have the zone. They have specific. Uh, zoning bylaw um, passed for that property mm -hmm. so if they need to vary from something then that'll go to committee of adjustment yeah but just to be clear at this point there is no committee of adjustment application uh, the site plan that is at the committee at the city would be approved by staff mm -hmm. um, and staff are you know uh, and we will provide input uh, into that process, but in the end, um, it's a it's a staff uh, 
approval uh, once they're satisfied with the design and the site plan and all that kind of thing. And uh, as Thomas says, if they uh, somehow offend the zoning bylaw in some way, then it's up to them to apply for a minor variance or for a rezoning for that matter. Okay. All right, anything else on um, uh, 79 uh, Collier? That one will be back to us next month, I think. All right, um, a review of our work plan. Um, Uh, yes, Craig. I, I think we missed 2.7, wasn't it? Uh, I'm sorry? Yes, 59 William Street. Oh, sorry, I skipped, I skipped uh, that one. Sorry, 59 William Street. Um, potential listings. Um, Thomas. Thank you, Chair. Yes, that would be me. We actually have two listings to consider, uh, one being 59 William Street, the second being 188 Collier, uh, and they have come in uh, on the day that the agenda was posted. So I didn't have the chance to, uh, to put, ask Sammy to put the address on the agenda, but as the matter is, is a, um, it's a standing matter on the agenda, we felt it appropriate to bring it to the committee. Um, unless the committee disagrees, we could always push it off to, uh, to the next meeting, but I would recommend that we proceed. Yeah. Um, I, but I, first- I sorry, never want to push things off. So um, okay. let's deal with it. Okay, yes, we have time this evening. So the first one is 59 William Street, and I'm gonna quickly share my screen because I have a couple of things to share, uh, to show, sorry, just one second. Um, before you do that, um, both of these are for listing, not for designation, is that correct? That's correct, Chair. Okay, carry on. <clears throat> okay, so we should be showing my screen and you should be seeing a Google map image of 59 William Street. <clears throat> yeah. And that can get a thumb. Okay, yes. So I'm just going to do a quick rotation here. So this is uh, William Street North and South. So this is the property in question. And let me just go to the street view. We have a number of homes uh, listed on this street. So William mm -hmm. Street is no stranger to our heritage uh, uh, inventory. So there is an original structure that fronts onto William Street and there is a um, an addition you can just see. Um, I believe it's a one-story addition and it's about the width of the, of the house. And I also did an evaluation on the property because we, we have that evaluation form. So I try to complete these for each one of our um, uh, proposed listings. <clears throat> so there is no property name. Sometimes these do have uh, a name. Um, this one does not. It's a single batch dwelling address is 59 William Street. And the assessment rule number is there. I'm not going to go ahead and read that. Um, and right now, I just want to sh uh, showcase the attributes that I think would apply to this property. There's actually two attributes. Um, the first one being that the property has a historical value or associated value because it has a direct association being an organization um, or an institution. So the applicant states that the Presbyterian Church actually was run out of this building up until 1968, from 1919 to 1968. So it, in my view, that, that ticks off this criteria in, in terms of historical value. Can the committee see my screen? I don't know if I'm sharing the Word yes. document. Yep. Yes, yeah, yeah, I can, can see, see it. it. Yeah. I can okay. see it. And the second thing that um, is a fairly standard for, for these properties in Allendale is that the property has contextual value because it is important in defining and maintaining and supporting the character of the area. So that's, that's a fairly standard one. So this is the new one. So um, based on those two things, um, uh, and what else did I write here? Oh, exceptional features. So the applicant had noted that the building has original stained glass windows and of course, original red brick. Um, it was used as a Presbyterian church between 1919 and 1968. Um, and also the, the, it's a, it's a multi, I guess, generational home in that it's been continuous ownership since 1968 by the same family or direct descendants of thereof, which is, this is not, you know, um, ultra rare, but it's not common. Usually homes tend to turn around uh, ownership. So you don't see properties staying in the same ownership. Um, and based on that, my recommendation would be that we do list, um, this property um, or add this property to the Municipal Heritage Register as a listed property. All right, um, can I have a motion then, uh, because we will need a motion to do this, 
uh, to add 59 William Street to the um, uh, listed, uh, yeah, to the, to the heritage list in the city. Uh, there's probably a better wording for that, but I'm sure that uh, the staff can I'd work move that, that Mr. Chair. I'm sorry? I'd move that, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do I have a seconder? Chair. Yeah. Yep, okay, Kathy. All right. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That I can Aye. see. <laughs> all right, anybody opposed? Thank you, that's carried. All right, let's move to 188 Collier. Okay, so just one second, uh, committee. I'm just going to go ahead and pan to 188 Collier Street. There you go. Okay, there we go. So it's on the uh, east end of Collier. So I'll give you a 2D view. It is actually this property on the right. So there's three similar properties, and it's the one on the right. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I know where that is. Yeah. So you, right now you're looking north-ish, okay. sort of more northwest. And this is looking east, and that's looking west towards City Hall. <clears throat> and there's actually a, um, yeah, a really this. nice heritage yeah. home next door uh, that I caught my eye when we were looking, when I was reviewing this, uh, reviewing the application. So I'll go ahead and pull up the evaluation form for this property as well. Um, and hopefully the committee can see that. Mm -hmm. yep. They're uh, similar to 59 William. There's no property name and it's a single detached dwelling. Address is uh, 188 Collier and the assessment real numbers on the screen. Now this one is a little bit, um, uh, I'll use the word contentious, I think, just because um, it didn't meet all of the, any of the heritage attributes in my assessment anyways. The applicant states that the home was actually built for a general returning from war. We're not entirely sure if that was World War I or World War II. So there, it has some uh, potential to have a direct association with a, a person that has merit to the community. Mm -hmm. But um, un until this time, I haven't been able to, to confirm that as no other information was provided. So I could potentially circle back with the applicant and ask for a little bit more information. I. It didn't, it, in my view, again, in my assessment, it didn't meet um, any of these criteria. Um, and I want to just go a little bit lower in the, in the form here. In my view, again, the architectural style is not, it's, it's just a suburban style. So it's a fairly modern building. The applicant states that the building was built around 1940. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's uh, also the applicant states that it was, it's a victory home. So I did, I did some looking and I found some architectural inconsistencies between what the building is uh, and what victory homes were. So, and this is again, just what I found. So first of all, the victory homes typically did not have a garage. Um, so the, the garage built in the basement foundation is sort of inconsistent with the victory home architecture. Um, the second thing is that there's a second story dormer uh, that is, you know, that is unique, like uh, Victor homes tend to not have dormers. They tend to be very, very steep roofs with flat roofs and you could see the vents on the roofs themselves. Um, and the other thing that caught my eye a little bit was that there was only three homes on this street that are victory homes. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there was more in, in the past, they've been replaced, but usually uh, victory homes tend to be built on mass. So you'll have you know, 10, 15, 20 of them along one street and they're very uniform looking streets. Whereas this, uh, it, it doesn't look like it to me. I think these homes were probably built a little earlier, uh, but I, I could be wrong. And earlier, I mean, in terms of closer to today's date. So that's, that's what I wanted to present to the committee, just to some, some research I did. Um, and, and based on my review, um, I wasn't sure if this property had, um, uh, you know, met the criteria for being added onto the municipal heritage register. So that was, that would be my, um, oops, I missed the number there. That would be my recommendation. And it's of course uh, um, the committee's decision to, to add, or, add or not, or we could perhaps uh, um, defer adding and we could look uh, to the applicant to provide some more information. That's all for me, Chair, thank you. 
All right. Um, any discussion on that? There, now I can see everybody again. Um, any thoughts on that one? Kath? Uh, I just, I'm not familiar with Victory Home. So do you, do you have a sample of what, like is our Victory Homes generally um, approved? Like if, if it was a true Victory Home, would we consider it? Because, uh, uh, like, I mean, if it was, I'm sorry, what was the age of the home again? I'm sorry, was it built in 40, 19, 1940, is that right? 1940, yeah. Right, yeah. okay, 1940, okay. So in, again, in like 40 years time or 20 years time, I mean, it doesn't have to be 100 years old to be considered a heritage home or a historic home. But I mean, do you, do you happen to have a sample of what a victory home looks like? I do, see? I do. And that's a, a Campbell <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> That's exactly it. And uh, I was going to pull up Campbell Avenue in, in Barrie because I did try to find the okay, neighborhood. Okay. okay, I'm familiar yeah. with Campbell Avenue. Yeah, the, so I do the know. homes look exactly how David had pointed on the screen. Right, there. so those are victory. Okay, so yeah. those are called victory homes. Okay. Yeah. All right, Sarah? Uh, thanks. I have a couple questions. Um, sure. Is it possible that if it is, in fact, for returning general, um that it be upgraded from sort of the generic to give it a little more uh, importance like that Dahmer would be a little bit more of an upgrade to a normal one just you know a thought um and about the um criteria i wonder if we could look at it from the has the potential to yield information because it is a floating 40 that sort of a historic building is considered a floating 40 years you know, it may not be great, but, you know, in another 10 years, it might be an example of a house that we don't really have anymore. Um, so just from that standpoint, it might make the list. All right, um, uh, Deb. Yeah, uh, just, we already have a, a home that's similar to that at 22, 22 Granville. Uh, so if, yeah. if you're trying to figure out how to make a decision based on age, we've already been there um, okay. in terms of style of house and age of house. So that precedent's kind of set. So. And I don't know if it was considered a victory home. It's similar. It looks, actually looks newer uh, than the one on Collier. All right, uh, um, Councillor Harris, I think I saw you next, then Sarah. Oh, sorry, I, I, was, I was trying to search up uh, 22 Granville. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, and I was just going to build off, uh, it was Sarah's point that, you know, definitely if, if we can, and I, you know, obviously Thomas did the assessment, it didn't, it did not check a lot of boxes, we recognize what we saw there. But if, if the person of interest is checked, then maybe that could be our, um, catalyst to do it now and, and I like the idea of not lo lo losing this but maybe it could be set aside as a potential given it's, it's aging every day as we all are so um, <laughs> you know <laughs> you know that's always a potential but if that makes sense but maybe if the general happens to be attached and is significant then that could be our way to check it now would be my thought. Okay Sarah and then Craig. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm probably going to say about the same thing as Jim is that if we could go and have a bit more information about the general, if they could do a little bit more research, that would be, I think, very beneficial. Yeah. All right, Craig? I, I, I actually know the person that owned that house before, and he's at my school, so I can ask him if he knows any information, the former owner. And he also, I believe, Massey owned that house at one point in time, and his house is right behind it. And the house that you, Thomas mentioned uh, to the right, uh, I dropped off an application and they were seriously considering adding it to the registry. So it, being right next door to that, I mean, it, it would be a nice precedent that perhaps they would consider as well. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, uh, David. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. 
this also I might note brings up a little bit broader question, which might, uh, where we might look at our evaluations and how they work. When we were doing inventory street by street, how, there are houses like this, I know in my neighborhood that come up, which, uh, you know, I had to question whether or not they would be of what and what historical value. And I think this is the point at which we move from a red brick century to even post-war brick homes of various kinds. And they very much reflect the nature of their neighborhoods and they're intermixed with other homes. And uh, I would like to see a little bit broader net cast perhaps. Uh, although at this time we do need to make the case for this home and hopefully we can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, any further discussion on this one? No? All right. Um, you know, uh, and I, I'm assuming that it was the owner that requested us to put it on the list. Is that correct, Thomas? That's correct. All right. Um, when that happens, even if the house is two years old, I think I'm willing to put it on the list. <laughs> All right. Um, can I have a motion then to uh, put 188 Collier on our list? Uh, David, seconder, anybody? Kathy, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> Craig, then. Craig, then. All right. Um, and all in favor? Sure. All right. Any opposed? Thank you very much. That carries. So, um, and I do think, um, Thomas, just a, a little asterisk uh, that if we could find out more information about the general, I think that would be very useful. Uh, so if Craig can follow that up, that'd be great. All right. Anything else on that? No, no more listings for the day. All right. Uh, review of committee work plan. Um, did you put that on Thomas or Tammy? Thomas did, all right. I did, uh, yes, Chair, thank you very much. Um, and I, it's a little challenging this year talking about work plans because uh, a lot of our plans uh, went up in smoke in March and um, we might be in the same situation until uh, March of next year or perhaps later. So. Uh, it's a little ambitious for us to be talking about work plan, uh, but um, it's, it's probably still just good practice to look at, you know, things that we had been able to do um, and uh, what things sort of got deferred. So I'm going to go ahead and share the uh, work plan on my screen and basically just go over what we've got so far. And I'm... Um, and I'd like the committee to perhaps think of, is there anything else we want to achieve in, in 2021, uh, 2021 being our full, our last full year as a sitting committee. Tammy, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this committee uh, would dissolve in November of 2021. Um, 22. So 22, isn't it 22? <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, so it is the last, I guess, last full year. And then 2022, we just got uh, eight, nine, 11 months or so. Um, so I just wanted to to go over the the, Work plan and see if there's anything else we want to add. And what I've actually done is I'm going to go ahead and share the screen first. Screen two, there we go, share. Okay, so what I've actually done is I've taken all the material that was basically in 2020 and I've collapsed it to be with 2021. And, um, and we can go through each one of these uh, matters. Um, and basically decide if we want to still proceed with that matter for 2021. Uh, so updating the heritage register is, is number one. Uh, it's something that we've done for the last two years and I suspect that the committee would like to continue that uh, moving forward. We have uh, the plaque program. So uh, this is the first year we've really taken this uh, issue seriously. We've got the plaques, we're gonna have the plaques ordered. Um, and you know, this year we really focused on getting those designated buildings uh, and I believe the committee had asked that um, for next year, we actually start looking at the uh, listed properties. Mm -hmm. And um, so I can update that uh, in the work plan if the committee's uh, in agreement with that approach. Um, Thomas, um, one of the 
uh, recommendations that we had on the official plan was that we develop an inventory. Um, and I guess uh, an inventory is going to be pretty unofficial. Uh, and we certainly have uh, put together uh, at least a partial list. Um, so it would be, I think, interesting to be able to sort of complete that inventory. Um, and I agree, we need to uh, continue to uh, add uh, buildings to the, our list. I think it would be also terrific if we could uh, uh, work on designating a couple of buildings because there certainly are some buildings that should be designated. Um, and uh, I'd like to see us uh, put our minds to that next year if we can. Thank you, Chair, and that's that's uh, an excellent um, excellent two points. And I think we do have the inventory on here somewhere. Mm, there it is. Yeah, I'm, number eighteen was, uh, and actually, you, <laughs> Chair, you are the lead on this matter, which is actually creating a modern cultural heritage resource inventory. And um, we did get started on that earlier on. We started pulling uh, resources. We found a binder that had a hundreds and hundreds of buildings listed, um, not even just buildings, some of them were address points and locations that have cultural heritage value. Um, it, however, it only exists in that binder. And the goal was to have a student this year to go ahead and digitize that in the, to the um, GIS and even have a public uh, input window where the public can say, this is a cultural heritage resource that's worth of noting. Um, and then COVID happened and we didn't get any students. And then, so, uh, and then staff got reallocated and yeah, so it, it's, some, okay. it's definitely something on the committee's work plan. And, you know, I don't, our target was to have it done by this time, uh, you know, this year. So that might have to be changed to um, end of Q4 yeah. 2021. So that's definitely something the committee uh, can work on. Okay. So highlight that green. And the other matter, uh, Chair, is you referenced um, more designations. And I was going to suggest that to the committee as well, is that we really push for, you know, getting at least one, obviously, but uh, more if possible. Um, and, you know, and I, I was thinking that the committee could potentially even hire an Apple, uh, hire a consultant to go out there and identify, you know, top top five properties that the city should designate, uh, you know, and we would probably want to stick to the historic neighborhoods and uh, ask the applicant or the consultant to go out there and look. So uh, if the committee is on board with that idea, I can add that to the work plan. Any discussions on that? Okay, I don't see any, but so I, I do think if, that it's, yes, Kathy. So if, if, they, if uh, a consultant is hired, Thomas, what would they do? They would they would just go out, or would we suggest, or would they just go out and and choose because it's somebody that's obviously professional and knows what they're looking for? And then does it would the would council um, designate it, or would they be, or would we be in discussions with the individuals that they were suggesting? How how does that work? How would that work? So that's a very good question, Kathy. Um, the way I envision it would be is that the committee would go out and actually hire somebody to to identify these properties. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's more of an, uh, an inventory. Or, um, they would identify candidate buildings for potential designation, um, and then once that work is done, then we have um, background research done as to you know to justify the designation. We would then initiate the designating process process under the Ontario Heritage Act. Um, and that, you know, that would involve uh, putting together a bylaw, there would be notices issued, things be in the paper. It's, it's an entire public process, similar to like a zoning bylaw, where the right. public has input and the property owner would have input. And we would, of course, work with the property owner, uh, you know, to ensure that we have their support. However, the committee does have the authority to, or the council has the authority to, mm -hmm. to designate mm -hmm. buildings um, without owner consent. And ideally, we don't. We're not in that situation. But if the you know if the uh, consultant comes back and says, 
this is absolutely critical. There's five of these buildings in all of Ontario. This was under pressure, you know, being demolished or something like that. Um, you need to designate this one regardless if the owner gives consent. And, and uh, we would initiate that process. Yeah, and I, I don't even know whether we really need to hire a consultant. It seems to me that um, uh, we have that one building at um, the Five Points, um, that triangular-shaped building. And, uh, I mean, they're, they're pretty rare, and I think that is certainly a candidate. And then I was thinking, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of churches around that um, could be des should be designated um, in the downtown area, especially. So, you know, it may well be that what we do is, um, and I, I think um, that we really, if we're going to go down, down that designating route, uh, we really, for the first couple, definitely need to have the um, owners on board uh, because otherwise um, I have a feeling that things will not turn out well. Um, so I think that's, um, that's something that I, I think we should work on uh, in this coming year. Um, and I'd, I'd definitely like to have one or two or three um, uh, doing that as a bit of a focus. Kathy. Um, but, and I, I think I understand where you're going, but wouldn't we would still need a consultant to actually do the written portion of it? Yes, we would. Yes. But, um, yeah. but we could, but what we could recommend which buildings? Is that what you're? Yeah. 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 That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 There's, there's, uh, if I could chair, there's a number of, of different avenues, different approaches we could take. Um, and, you know, we don't have to figure it all right now. It's just a matter of, you know, is the committee interested in proceeding this direction for 2021? And um, in 2021, you'll start seeing this uh, as an agenda item probably regularly as we get updates from a subcommittee. Because like with this sort of, you know, scope of work, it's going to require a couple of people to, to, to help rather than just uh, one. Yes. Yeah. So if I could chair, I would just like to go back to the top sure. of the, yeah, the list here. And it's okay. I think we're on the same wavelength there, chair. Um, I think there, okay, we talked about plaque programs. So I will update this because there's some older t language in here, like um, uh, plaque application criteria and things like that. So um, don't know, not sure if we need that. And uh, something that's actually I have been failing the committee on, and I apologize, is uh, development applications uh, review process or approval process. I was supposed to provide this committee with training as to, you know, Planning Act applications and background. So I would still like to do that because we do have quite a bit of time ahead of us still. Um, and the committee is likely going to be asked to provide comment on development applications. So uh, I'm, oh, I'm going to try to get it in for January 2021 meeting. Um, I don't think it has to be super in-depth. In uh, I might even get one of the development planners to come and do a presentation for the committee rather than me because the development planners are, they breathe this uh, on a daily. So I'm a policy planner. I don't, uh, I don't do, work with this on a daily. So that would be my um, mm -hmm. course of action on that. Yeah, good idea. Uh, I think there was uh, also, this is a standing item because it has these little blue asterisks. So we wanted to do this annually. Heritage Street sig uh, signature, sorry, signature, I can't read my own uh, document. Signage for historic neighborhoods. Um, I think there was a desire to expand the signage. Um, we, and again, some of this language is a little older. Um, and I think there's two things in this one item one being street names and one being um, actual plaques or, you know, these big signs that say, welcome to Allendale and then, you know, things like that. So I'll likely split that apart because there's, you know, there's a reference to Tallendale Woods Homeowner Association and then there is uh, heritage signage for historic neighborhoods. So I'll split that up into two items. Um, I think that's something that committee still wanted to, uh, to proceed. Heritage awards. So we are of course doing the 2020 Heritage Awards in 2021, but I think we'll want to go through the process for 2021, 2021 Heritage Awards that would be issued in 2022. So I think we'll leave that if the committee's okay. Um, 
this was something we were going to work on. We were going to try to revamp um, the, 20, the Heritage Wars process themselves, you know, in terms of how we're doing it, uh, the location and things like that. So I think COVID did that for us, uh, you know, not necessarily in the way we'd like it to, to be. But I think, again, this is something that the committee wanted to do. So I left that on the work plan. Yeah. And I apologize if I'm going a little quickly, committee, just a number of items and we have another matter to get to this, this evening. Uh, celebrate Barry 2020. Uh, well, now it's going to be 2021. Um, if it is held this year, I think the committee wants to set up another booth. Uh, so I just left that on there. I'm seeing nods. So uh, if there's no objections, I'll leave that on there again. Uh, doors open. Again, this year was a little weird. Uh, maybe by September, things, the September of next year, things might be different and we might be able to gather in person. So I, I left that on the committee uh, as there's, there seems to be interest in the community, community from um, different landowners, different groups. So I left that on there. Um, just wait. Uh, I just had a comment. Um, I was. I, I don't think it's here, but there seems to have been uh, just the whole. Mar this is all about education, and uh, so hopefully next year we can do things like the farmers market. But also uh, Dunlop Street was doing some things. Now the street. Is, so you know, if we can put in there that if if we're able to to do some more education. Uh, and Dunlop, if they if they do the the uh, downtown uh, sort of streets uh, closed off. Yeah. Uh, I think okay. That's a great idea, Craig. And um, I can certainly add that, Craig, and I put you as the lead on that item. <laughs> <laughs> That's a and warning to everybody. If you speak up, you will be leaving. <laughs> it's, and, it's, the, uh, yeah. and I think the BIA will provide you with the table and tent too. Yeah. yeah. I think I got the BIA there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> and I can say the BIA is committed to, I think, um, 10 yeah. closures next year. Oh, wow. Okay. And they've, great. It's, yeah. And they've actually um, been handing out, they got a box of, of the heritage walking tours from Thomas, I think earlier, and they're handing those out like crazy um, at the weekend, the pedestrian weekend closures, they've been handing them out, which is great. And they've also published uh, in their Noella festival information, the sale of the um, heritage ornaments. Oh yeah. So that's happening too. Okay. Good. Okay, moving on to item number 10, uh, participating in OP process. The committee is doing that at, uh, as it is now and that'll likely continue uh, into 2021. Yeah. Um, culture days. Um, this was something that I think in September of 2019, the committee didn't participate in um, fully. Actually, we, if we, uh, agreed to sort of abstain from the event at that time. So we can leave this as a yellow item and, and revisit that, you know, I June I of think next what, year. Yeah. And I think what happens with this one, Thomas, is it runs almost at the same time as doors open. That's right, yes. Which is, a, which, you know, if there was some way to bring them both together um, and work with the culture group even, um, would be great. Okay, and so I would look yeah. to the committee to, to mm -hmm. confirm whether you'd like to attend. Well, sure. you know, we don't have to have the details in here, uh, but it's just a matter of do we want to turn this into a green item and uh, assign, you know, sort of a lead to it. Yeah, and when, once we know more about Culture Days, so I guess we can we can do that. Okay. It's, I think it's usually in, yeah, September. It's usually in September. Yeah. Okay, so I'll revisit that at a later date. Uh, Heritage Newsletter. Um, this was, again, something that we had talked about um, quite a while ago. Um, we had actually deferred it to the February 2020 meeting, and I don't think we had a February 2020 meeting. Maybe that was the last meeting, but um, 
it hasn't moved since then. So I'm not sure if the committee wants to move on this in 2021. I have a comment, if that's okay, Mr. Chair. Yeah, sure. I can't see you, so speak up. Yeah, it's yes. my fault. Thank you. Um, this is a comment. I, I know um, pros and cons to everything, but I wondered if, if it would be better worded as a heritage uh, media strategy. Because I think on, under deliverables, we have, I mean, Thomas and others uh, have done wonderful articles that have been uh, presented mm -hmm. on behalf of heritage. So instead of a newsletter, um, like a media strategy and listing all the great things that have, because it's a pretty good number, uh, and, you know, and we using social media, whatever we use uh, to um, get the wor word out about heritage, uh, probably a lot easier and more timely than a than newsletter. And that's all. Thank you. I think that's a great uh, a, a great point, and it's um... well. And Craig was the lead. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know, counselor. You spoke to the matter, so. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I was just going to say something, too. Um, you know, sure. I was just thinking about media. You know, we just are, have these plaques being put up. Um, I, I wonder if somehow we can contact and they can do a little story about that, that we're getting these uh, plaques put up on designated buildings. You know, I don't yeah. know. Because that, I mean, that's a that's a great story, right? So. Sure, and and um, when the plaque goes goes on, maybe we should uh, do a little something and uh, invite uh, Barry today and whoever else wants to write about it. I think that's a great idea. Okay. All right, anything else? You know, okay. we, um, one of the things. I mean, the problem is the problem with the newsletter is who's going to write it. If, if we did do it, even if it was just um, an annual newsletter or a, or twice a year, I mean, who would who would write it, Thomas, if, if we did do that? That's that's a great question, Kathy, and I think it was is, is there a professional to... within the organization or would would we hire someone? Sorry, am I on mute? I can't tell if I'm on mute here. Yeah. No, Can I'm I, not. Okay. I think that um, that that is a good question and, and kind of the utility of it is also a good question. Um, and so my view of it is that if it's a newsletter, it's probably a down the list in terms of uh, priority. Mm -hmm. But um, if it's a media strategy whereby we can, we can uh, get a bit of publicity for heritage, um, then I think, you know, that's something that we really ought to be doing. Um, so, and, and I think, you know, we're, we're going to try to do that by giving out the Heritage Awards during Heritage Week and try to get uh, kind of a double bang for our buck, if you will. And if we, um, if we, if we did do the newsletter portion of it, or, or where does it fit in things like um, that we could share with people, not just stories like that, but um, for instance, like the ability to apply for SIP or, you know, um, pl please come out and list your home or this is the process or, you know, just things that would be good for people to know in general. I'd say media Not strategy. Just stories about a specific home, but heritage matters, adaptive reuse, how to do things, where to reach out, uh, things like you know, are in the various newsletters that other small towns do. Are you thinking like a physical newsletter or something electronic, like even a blog that could be on the City of Barrie website and, and would access Barrie help write this stuff? And the problem, I think the problem has been in the past is that people don't use the City of Barrie website. It's it's not, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not, it's better, you know, there's better social media than the website. The website is really informative information that the city has to put out, but people don't generally go looking for fun stories on the city's website. No, but you, could, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm trying to get at? 
Yeah, no, I know what you mean. You could put the link to the blog in Facebook. Yes. It just has yes. to live somewhere. Yes. yes. <laughs> Unless you were thinking like a handout, mail out sort of thing. Yeah. All right. I, I do think that we're uh, we're trying to figure out how to do the strategy. And okay. uh, at this point, we're, uh, we really need to figure out what we're going to do as opposed to how we're going to do how it. How to do so it. Okay. I think that... Um, uh, a heritage strategy, I think, yes, I think we should be talking about that. Um, I think the, the newsletter, which started this whole conversation, may be part of that strategy, but I'm not sure that it's something that uh, we should be putting a lot of energy in at this moment. I think Thomas had a question. Okay, I can't see uh, Thomas. Thomas, do you want to say something? Uh, I did, thank you, Chair. I uh, was just going to speak to, just to to help the committee resolve the matter. Um, I think we've had bigger, better success when we've uh, either accidentally or purposefully um, worked with another group. I think uh, Deb's um, group does uh, a newsletter pretty regularly. Uh, they have great readership, they have great outreach, they have Facebook, Twitter following. Um, I know Ian's stories on Mary Today, mm -hmm. yep. uh, on the internet that he publishes. Um, I think we have almost better outreach through those. So it's almost, we should look like the uh, Councillor Harris was saying that we should always look for partners rather than produce our own content. Mm -hmm. um, because th that is going to be challenging for staff to actually do that. I don't think you're going to have staff from Access Berry writing these things. It would be down to me. Um, and uh, I'm not particularly, um, I don't particularly excel in that. Uh, and then also resourcing would be a challenge for me as the official plan gets more uh, down the line, and my resources are going to become increasingly stretched. So I would I would recommend to the committee that we try to blend the information dissemination goal that you're referring to, Kathy, into mm. the uh, heritage media strategy and work with different groups to do that. So if there is an article out there, you know, the article can reference uh, Heritage Berry website. And if you want to find more information on how to do this or that, we sort of try to plug ourselves into these things rather than uh, compete for attention ourselves. That's it for me, Chair. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That is a good strategy, actually. All right. Um, yeah, Thomas, can we move on down the list? Yes, Chair. So I have got um, this is something in uh, an item that I was getting personally interested in uh, Explore Heritage Home uh, Tax Relief Program. Uh, again, because it's a carrot to get people to list their property, and it's a heavy, substantial carrot. Uh, you know, if you can get tax relief of thousands of dollars, even if hundreds of dollars a year, because you're listed or designated property, um, I think that, that would be a you know a huge win for us. There's other communities out there that do do this, uh, smaller communities. Uh, it do it does have a financial impact on the city, so we would have to put together a comprehensive package. But my predecessor who was in, the, in, in this role uh, started researching this and I just found the folder with all of her research um, and I started leafing through it. And I think it's something that the committee can, um, you know, uh, can work on because we got the CIP as a financial incentive. Uh, I think this is a bigger financial incentive. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I think that's definitely worth uh, looking at um, because on an individual homeowner's uh, vision of it, it makes quite a difference. But from this overall city coffers, I'm not sure that it would make a very significant dent. So it certainly would be uh, interesting to uh, explore it and see what, what is possible. I have a comment, Mr. Chair, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I know you can't see me. So, no. uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, I just uh, in follow up on our conversation about Collier, uh, you know, if, you know, I know it was more tongue in cheek and, and said with, with, um, with support for heritage, but if we, if we accepted all the applicants, we would have to then really nail down on who gets in uh, if we're starting to attach financial costs to the city. So, or have it a very manageable cost, but I think that's would really give us you know, a lot more consideration about who gets on if we start uh, giving financial incentives. So that's just, a, I guess, a, a caution that probably everybody's aware of. So I just, right. yeah. thank you. No, no, and I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, 
and I, I think um, it, it's probably uh, something that we could distinguish and only um, have it for houses that are designated. Yeah. Um, and that would be an extra incentive for that. But anyway, yeah. I think it's I worth like looking into. Um, Kathy. And the actual, uh, and the, the, the new homeowner of 142 Collingwood Street asked about that. And Thomas, I don't know if she, if when you were speaking with them, if they had asked, but she said she was, once they're settled in, she's very interested in getting involved in the group in general, mm -hmm. but she also wondered about whether there was a, a tax relief for designated homeowners currently. And I've had inquiries through planner of the day, people um, looking to purchase homes and people are just doing research. Uh, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, Barry is not one of those municipalities that have a <laughs> tax relief program. So I think, I think it's something to explore. I mean, um, I, I want to uh, comfort, I guess, anybody who's watching that, uh, you know, we'd take a comprehensive strategy to this, you know, we, we, uh, you know, definitely look at what is the impact on the city in terms of financially. And um, as Councillor Harris said, um, we would probably have some criteria in in that to, to you know to distinguish which homes can get actually versus those which cannot. Yeah. Yeah, but I do think it's worth exploring uh, for sure. Uh, we can always say no. Um, all right, uh, you want to carry on, uh, Thomas? Mm -hmm. just one second, sorry. I'm just going to. Um... Apologies, committee. Okay, I think there was um, funding opportunities. So this is something I have to explore. I'm not entirely sure what I had meant when I wrote this, but um, I think this was January 8th. I think it was, I will go back to the, I will come back to the committee on this um, when we actually, when I present an updated um, work plan to the committee. I'll have more clarity on this because it's escaping my mind right now and I apologize. Uh, number 17, this was uh, go tunnel photographs in the Allendale Heritage Station. I think we had interest in working with uh, Metrolinx and actually getting pictures installed in that tunnel. So as people were walking through. I can give it up to you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Oh, I'm not the chair, I apologize. Sorry. Well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> thank you. Right, uh, uh, Councilor Harris, go ahead. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, and this is uh, obviously exciting. Um, initiative and has history as well. Uh, I can say I've sent emails to Metrolinks and haven't had traction, but to, I'll give credit to uh, Kathy. When we were meeting uh, last week with the uh, senior manager of community relations, Mr. Nick Fayetta, um, that was brought up again. So um, I will follow up. And I think the opportunity with the um, Metrolinks Go Station uh, and the project that City Barry moving the transit hub, it's a great opportunity to kind of start to really put this in place. So I don't know, uh, you know, when Metrolinks will get excited about doing it, but definitely met Mr. Fayetta expressed interest and we'll follow up. Um, so, you know, the invitation or the ask has been made, you know, how it's gonna happen is yet to be determined, but we, we, we definitely got an expression of interest in the idea. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, sorry, I was yeah. gonna say, while we're saying this, with. Perhaps when this new building, if it gets built, maybe one of the suggestion is inside, uh, they could have old photographs, you know, in the new ticket building that they're, they're going to put in, yeah. you know, right away. I, I mean, I know it's way ahead of time, but it's just something to think about yeah. that would be really, really, and it doesn't even just have to be trains. It can be just the whole Allendale community. That might mm -hmm. be something they can think about or mural or, the, the floor of it, a map or whatever. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, um, this thing, the new terminal is going to move forward fairly quickly, um, I think starting next year and it'll be open uh, late in 2022. So uh, now is probably a time to start uh, talking about it. Um, and uh, let me see what I can do on that. Uh, there might be somebody uh, in the city that um, I'm sure there's architects and everybody else involved. So um, leave it with me and I'll, I'll see if I can talk to Rick or, Rick or somebody there to figure out how we might try to do that. 
Okay. When we were, um, Claire, when we were talking to Metrolinx, Jason Zimmerman from the city was the mm -hmm. gentleman who was updating us on the bus terminal itself and what's happening. So I don't know if Jason is somebody that you might want to speak with. Okay. Thank you for that. Or, or Brent yeah. as well, Forsyth. Yeah. He worked, he's, um, Okay, uh, let me do a little uh, sleuthing on that. Okay, Chair, if I could continue, there's just a few Carry more on, items. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so the next item was um, military heritage park tree planting. And this is something that Craig had suggested that we uh, actually plant trees for soldiers lost, um, um, you know, soldiers that lived in the area from Barry and his fellow as well as Vespera. Um, this was something that we wanted to have in place by end of Q4 2020, so this time. so. If it's something that we want to explore this year, we can um, we can mark that as a green item for for 2020. All right. What's your pleasure? Did you want to speak to that, Craig? Um. Yeah. I. I mean, I it was an idea. I. I. I don't know. It, I mean, I can. I can work on it for sure. I mean, do people still think that? I. I, I know in Cookstown they have uh, the. The beautiful forest there and and each of the um trees i think they're 100 year old uh, maples each one was for uh for the 65 each one was for a soldier from cookstown and they just had their um a big showing on the tv about it and they had and it seems like you know for thinking about the future that's something we can plant now for the future <laughs> that's yeah idea. yeah it may be something um that we should take up with um Parks Department, like uh, Kevin Rankin or somebody like that, because he's he's the tree man, and um, I think that would be a good uh, good way to start. I think, Craig. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I'll mark that as something we want to uh, at least get the conversation started on that. Yeah. Uh, finding Barry. This is a guide to plaques and markers in the city. This is something that I was supposed to have a student work on uh, this year, but unfortunately, that was not. Not going to happen. We didn't get any students. So if we get students again, I'd like to update that document. It's just a, it's sort of like our guide to tour guide book, uh, books. Mm -hmm. It's just a document to, to these uh, plaques and whatnot. So it needs to be updated. Uh, um, and we already while, while we're on that, it's actually a really good tool. And yeah. sorry, Kathy. Uh, okay, I was just going to say. Um, when I actually came across, I got some information passed to me that I was supposed to give to Barry Archives. Um, and it's old. Uh, it's got the that list in it, uh, Thomas, the plaques and markers. And when I actually went through and read through that, it gave me an idea about um, li listing some things that aren't currently listed where it actually shows like plaques and markers. Like I know we listed the cenotaph, but I mean, there's a lot of other things like maybe we could start to list uh, the cemeteries and we could start to like the fountain in the Meridian Square and things that aren't ones that people need to approve of. They're, they are statues and like the fireman statue at, where the fire hall used to be we could start to list those and maybe even at some point they'll be designated. But that document was really interesting to read through because it gave you a whole bunch of really great information. And I think it's something that we all need to have a look at at some point. Because it even listed out where the designated plaques were. It had all the addresses of, of where the designated uh, plaques were currently. So it had the street addresses and stuff on it, which was really great. Good, all right. Well, that's something to, uh, to explore further. Um, one of my uh, thoughts on this was, uh, you know, um, if you're driving, uh, for example, in the United States, um, there's often, you know, you come to a city and there's a, a, a highway sign right on the, on the freeway that says historic downtown hmm. exit here. Um, I'm wondering if we could get something like that because um, 
you know, uh, the average tourist that is passing through Barrie um, wouldn't know from our street signage where to find our historic downtown. And that to me uh, is something that we probably should uh, try to figure out. How do we do that? Because um, that could bring a lot of tourism uh, to downtown. Mm. Uh, so if we could, yeah, thanks mm. for adding that, um, mm. uh, Thomas, because I do think that it's something that we should be uh, thinking about this coming year. Uh, uh, From sure. Elsa and Dunlop? I'm sorry? From Elsa and Dunlop? Like yeah, I'm, I'm not fussy as to which way it goes, but it needs yeah. to be, uh, you know, as direct as possible. Um, I mean, I, I would think maybe Dunlop and Bayfield, but, um, uh, you know, we can figure that out later. But. Chair, if I could, I just, uh, I think you saw it. I just added it under item number four. So yeah. when we actually start, uh, it might mm -hmm. turn into three new items and uh, mm -hmm. Kathy, I also added listing cemetery statues, parks, and plaques to uh, adding to the heritage register because yeah. number 17 or number 19, finding Barry, it's it's actually updating that document, which needs to be done. Yes. But I think that two other matters are, are related to other initiatives we're looking at. So um, yeah. we'll get that in there. Uh, yeah. Moving yeah. on to item number 20, uh, I know we discussed this uh, chair. The the this is a horsepower staff horsepower sort of intensive task i don't i can't promise that we can get to this because uh i'm i'm resourced out and if the only way we'd be able to move this forward is if we do have a student and i don't know if we're going to uh, usually we start talking about hiring a potential student in march april so i would suggest that we turn this into a yellow uh for the time being and revisit that at that time yeah i think that's uh, i think that's fair because uh we don't we can't overload you and can't overload the committee either. Right, yeah, and we do have a, a fairly large amount of green uh, items. Yes. Okay, and uh, I think uh, 20, uh, sorry, number 21, designate new buildings. Um, mm -hmm. We had already discussed that, so um, yeah. I think it's a repeat. And then we had already talked about, I think in our October or November meeting, about actually pursuing the uh, Lieutenant Governor's Heritage Awards for 2021. Um, so I'll turn that into a green and we've got Councilman yes. Harris as taking that on for us. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it is a, it's, it's a substantial amount of work and I know putting these uh, nomination packages is work. So it'll probably take some committee support as well. Yes. Uh, and yes. that's, that's it for me uh, chair. Uh, I will update this and, and uh, put it on the, hopefully on the January committee agenda uh, and we'll get some more details in here as well. Sure. Okay, that sounds good. Any uh, more comments or advice for um, Thomas? I have, okay. I have a quick comment. Mr. Oh, yes. Chair. Okay. <laughs> so I did notice my name gone to the uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor's uh, Awards. And yeah, thank you, Thomas, for recognizing it's a pretty big piece of work and happy to be participating. But, uh, you know, I think given all the time constraints and challenges, I, I, I you know, don't want to let my colleagues down, but it would be great to have a committee on that. And uh, certainly, um, you know, I think we have lots of interest in it. So, but just want to say, the, maybe I'm saying the obvious, but it's, uh, it would be a fair bit of work and certainly work worth doing, but uh, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> and, can, and strike committee maybe <laughs> um, would be great. Thank you. <clears throat> Sure. All right. Uh, well, and we can address that uh, early in the new year. How's that? Sounds like a plan. Okay. All right. Any other discussion on that one? Okay. Well, thank you, Thomas. And you'll bring it back to us uh, in January and then uh, we'll um, see where we go from there. And there's no shortage of work, obviously. Um, Absolutely. All right. Um, and the last item on our agenda is heritage artwork in downtown Barrie. And um, 
Thomas, I guess that's you as well. I, uh, Chair, I do not think so. I think that was Kathy's uh, item. Oh, okay. Was that mine? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, heritage art working down to, I think just, I think it's just uh, related to how, how do we, you know, murals are popping up all over downtown in various forms, whether it's on utility boxes or, um, or on the walls of some of the older buildings. How do we, how do we, how do we participate in that? I guess is my question. Like how do I, if we wanted heritage things, heritage pictures or heritage murals done on the side of a wall or a building and whether it be downtown or in Allendale or in Brock Park or in, um, what's the one you like Deb? What's your neighborhood, you like? Grove Park, um, you know, around town, not just downtown. Um, how, do, how do we do that? That would be my question. Oh, okay. And I think that's what that was related to. It was just, how, how do we go about doing that? Okay, Thomas, do you have an answer? Uh, I can, or Deb, did you want to say something? Um, I know there's a group within the city that's looking at graffiti abatement and they got some images from us several months ago and they're putting them on traffic boxes downtown. Right. And I think there's at least a couple of them that are done. So, so uh, there's that group, but I don't know if that's the same thing you're talking about, Kathy. Well, uh, just any like, uh, how how do we? What's the what's the process then? If we wanted to, you know, Craig and I have talked about having something done in Allendale um, on the. I, no, I don't know if they're utility boxes, Craig. What were they? Utility big the big silver utility boxes. Yeah. Or yeah. even on the side of a wall that's. That's, um, you know, it might be public property, but when you're driving down Essa Road, there is um, a couple of walls uh, on the side of, sides of the strip malls or the Salvation Army building. That's something, because it's, you really see it, it's visible, uh, that something could be done there. How, how do we do any of it? All right, I guess the how answer- How do we get involved? The, the, the short answer is if it's, a privately owned property, a privately owned wall that you want to paint. Mm. Uh, first thing you have to do is is get the approval of the of the person that owns it. Right. Um, and I guess the that is also true uh, for the city. If the city owns it, you also need city approval. Mm. Um, we do have a public arts committee, and uh, I think that is the route to go. Uh, I'm working on a mural in my ward, and that's where I've started to, okay. because they have the resources and the contacts and they know what they're doing. So any other comments, Craig? Yeah, I was just gonna say um, in Innisfil where, where I am uh, teaching, uh, they've gotten uh, the, the what, you know, silver boxes, which are really very unattractive. And they've got historical pictures on all of them. And I think they did it because it's their 200th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it would be good for tourism to mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. like, for example, the corner of Tiffin and Lakeshore, you know, where the Allendale cross from the station, there's one of those big silver boxes. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not, if you could put like a, a beautiful train on it or something. So kind of like they've done downtown. And if we can somehow get an art student from Georgian or something, you know, that might be something with some of our budget next year to, to think about, because I, I think that would really help with tourism and heritage and culture and all that stuff. All right. Well, we could, certainly, we could certainly add that to uh, the work plan. Uh, while Thomas has got it uh, out, uh, we can add it. And that way, um, you know, we can talk about it uh, next year and uh, figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something about it, Thomas? I did, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I, and I was just going to say that we do have a public art committee. They are uh, an excellent resource. So if this committee wants to fund a project, they are the ones to, to reach out to and, uh, and ask them to, you know, maybe advise us or at least drive that bus for us. Um, mm -hmm. And we can just sort of sign the check. Um, mm -hmm. 
or we support initiatives that they're uh, mm -hmm. taking on. So it's just a matter of reaching out and looking at if they have a work plan and if not adding this item or getting their help. Yeah. And, and, and I think um, in order to make these things concrete and, and to actually get something done, I think um, taking Craig's example of a big silver box in mm -hmm. a very specific location and seeing what we could do with that one, mm -hmm. uh, that would start the ball rolling, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the way to attack it. All right. Any other comments? Uh, Tom, tell us. I'm holding up my sign, you're on mute. I just caught myself, <laughs> sorry. Um, I was just saying it's getting late and this slipped my mind and I apologize, but the one thing I would uh, perhaps recommend is that the committee add comments about public art, historic public art in it for the official plan. We've received um, quite a bit of uh, comments from the public about the desire for more public art and more murals. So if there is comments from the committee in that regard, um, the committee can certainly do that. Hmm. Okay. All right, good suggestion. I just made a note of is it. That, is that in the public arts uh, section of the, where is that? <laughs> what uh, section of it? it? Or, does it or does it go, would it go under his, uh, the historic section? Or it doesn't um, matter. Let me check for you, Kathy. Just you know what I mean? Like, there's, a, there's a whole section in the official plan about uh, yeah. is that like, art, public art. So is that where it would go as opposed to in historic neighborhood? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'll, I'll wordsmith something for you. And we could also maybe include, or, or I know we have a public arts committee. Would they also work with, for instance, the Indigenous artists as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they do. Because that would be substantial for the Allendale area for sure as well, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, the city of Barrie has a bit of a underrepresented uh, Indigenous history and, uh, and histories. Um, and you know, that's something that we have talked about in our fascia plan, um, uh, sort of white papers that we'd like to see a little bit more of that. So I'm, I'm glad you're, you're raising that, Kathy. Yeah, because um, I mean, we I think we even are wondering about having them included in the walls of the tunnel of the GO. So not just the old, uh, the, the, the pictures that we had already previously chosen, Craig, but also maybe some of the um, Indigenous art from, you know, yep. from the area. They're definitely part of it, for sure. Okay. Anything else on the uh, artwork question? All right. That brings us to the end of the agenda. Uh, any other burning issues that are on your heart? Seeing none, then uh, let me take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas and a nice. Happy New Year, All right. since this is our very last meeting. And we'll see you next year. So, wow, okay. You guys, nice. guys, nice. Thank you very much. Oh, look at here. Merry Christmas. I love your crown, Kathy. I have the matching necklace. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks so much. Bye. Merry Christmas.